Okay, in this video, I'm going to derive the present values of perpetuities and growing perpetuities using geometric progression. So I'm not going to skip the bracket part out. So if you're not aware of that concept, you'll be fine with watching the previous two videos on this playlist. This one is completely optional, but if you are curious, just hang around for a bit. Let's start off with the perpetuity. We already know perpetuities give you the same amount of cash flow every year forever. Let that amount be C. So it looks something like this. In year one, you'll get C. In year two, you'll get C again. In year three, you'll get C again. And this will go on forever. So dot, dot, dot for that. Let's assume the discount rate to be capital R. Now let's discount all of these values that we have to figure out the present value of a perpetuity. So for year one, we'll have C divided by one plus capital R raised to the power number of periods. Number of periods is just one, so it's just one. And similarly for year two, we'll have C one plus capital R raised to the power two because it's year two. And for year three, we'll have C one plus R cubed and dot, dot, dot. Now we can see that C is common in all of these terms. So we can just take that out. And we are left with, within brackets, 1 by 1 plus r plus 1 by 1 plus r squared plus 1 by 1 plus r cubed. And this will go on, dot, dot, dot. We are left with this infinite geometric progression within brackets. Now the sum of an infinite GP is given by a divided by 1 minus small r where A is the first term of the series and R is the common ratio. Uh, do note the difference between all small r, which is the common ratio, and the capital R, which is the discount rate in this case. So the first term we have is just 1 by 1 plus r. So our A is equal to 1 by 1 plus capital R. And our common ratio, we can just find that out by dividing the second term by the first term. So R is equal to 1 by 1 plus r squared divided by 1 by 1 plus r. So the common ratio is just equal to 1 by 1 plus capital R. Okay, so we have our r, we have our a. Now we can find out the sum of a series within brackets right over here. Okay, I've just written everything clearly over here. Again, this is our sum, this is our a, our first term, and this is our common ratio. Let's quickly input these values. So our sum turns out to be 1 by 1 plus r divided by now substituting for smaller, which is the same 1 by 1 plus r. Oh, let's do some math. It's 1 plus r minus 1. And on numerator, we have 1 by 1 plus r. So 1 plus r, 1 plus r cancels out. And we are just left with 1 by capital R. This is the sum within the brackets. If you notice, our present value was equal to C into whatever was the term within brackets. So the present value of a perpetuity comes out to be C into 1 by R. That's just C by R. So that's the present value of an ordinary perpetuity. Now let's derive the present value of a growing perpetuity. For a growing perpetuity, again, you get cash flows every year, but in this case, they grow over time. Let the cash flow that you get in your first year to be C. So in your second year, you'll, it'll increase by G percent. So in your second year, you'll end up getting C into 1 plus G. In year three, you'll get C into G percent on top of that. So that's C into 1 plus G raised to the power 2. And this will go on forever. Now let's discount all of these and add them up to find the present value of a growing perpetuity. Um, so for year one, you're going to get C into 1 plus capital R. Again, let capital R be the discount rate. For year two, you're going to get C into 1 plus G. And in the denominator, you have 1 plus R raised to the power 2. And for year three, C into 1 plus G whole squared divided by 1 plus R cubed. And this will go on. Again, you can notice that C is common in all of these terms. So we can just take it out. And inside brackets, we have 1 plus R plus 1 plus g on numerator this side divided by 1 plus r squared plus 1 plus g squared divided by 1 plus r cubed. Now again, this is an infinite GP 
and we saw the formula in the last case which is just a divided by 1 minus small r where a is the first term and r is the common ratio the first term we can see within brackets is just 1 by 1 plus r to find out the common ratio we'll have to divide the second term by the first term so our common ratio r is just 1 plus g 1 plus r whole squared divided by 1 plus r so r is just 1 plus g divided by 1 plus r let me quickly box that up all right we have our first term we have our common ratio now we are ready to find out the sum again i have written them out neatly over here so let's quickly substitute the values and find our sum so a the first term is 1 by 1 plus r and we have 1 minus 1 plus g divided by 1 plus r One plus one, one by one plus r, one plus r, one plus r cancels out, and we are left with one by capital R minus capital G. Again, we had the present value to be equal to c into whatever was the term within brackets. So we'll just multiply this term with c, and we'll have our present value of a growing perpetuity. growing perpetuity so that's just c divided by capital r minus g now one more thing in the last video we talked about how the discount rate has to be greater than the growth rate of a perpetuity that is r has to be greater than g where does that come from well that comes from this uh, sum of an infinite gp formula we have that to be equal to a by 1 minus r in this case, the common ratio has to be less than 1. R has to be less than 1 for this formula to hold. And we have R to be 1 plus capital G divided by 1 plus R. And this has to be less than 1 as well. So we can multiply both sides by 1 plus R. And we get 1 plus G has to be less than 1 plus R. Or G has to be less than R. Now you have a better understanding of where this condition is coming from and why the present value is actually seen as negative when g is greater than r. Alright, hopefully I didn't bore you with all the math in this video and I'll see you in the next one.